Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We come together on this fifth Sunday in Easter time, and we hear another image of Christ. Last week we had that familiar image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. This Sunday we listen to him as the, the vine, and his Father is the vine dresser. He encourages us and all of his followers to abide in him as branches remain connected to the vine, the source of all goodness and life. We begin by looking into our own hearts and asking for strength and also for forgiveness in our lives. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the sorrowful of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy, and you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria al Señor, Gloria, Gloria, Gloria mi Dios, Gloria, gloria, gloria al Señor. Gloria, gloria, gloria a mi Dios. Glory to God in highest of heaven and on the earth peace to people of good will. We praise and bless you, adore and glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Gloria, gloria, gloria al Señor. Gloria, gloria, gloria a mi Dios. Gloria, gloria, gloria al Señor. Gloria, gloria, gloria a mi Dios. Lord God, heavenly King, God and Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only be God and Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Gloria, gloria, gloria al Señor. Gloria, gloria, gloria a mi Dios. Gloria, gloria, gloria al Señor. Gloria, gloria, gloria a mi Dios. Seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. For you alone are the Lord Most High. Gloria, gloria, gloria al Señor. Gloria, gloria, gloria a mi Dios. Gloria, gloria, gloria al Señor. Gloria, gloria, gloria a mi Dios. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Gloria, gloria, gloria al Señor. Gloria, gloria, gloria a mi Dios. Gloria, gloria, gloria al Señor. Gloria, gloria, gloria a mi Dios. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new and holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. 
Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles. And he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists and they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers, the word of the Lord. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will fulfill my vows before those who fear the Lord. Then lowly shall eat their fill. They who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts live forever. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall bow down before him. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. To him alone shall bow down. All who sleep in the earth before him shall bend. All who go down into the dust. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. And to him my soul shall live. My descendants shall serve him. Let the coming generation be told of the Lord, that they may proclaim to a people yet to be born the justice he has shown. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in the word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we showed, and the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us, the word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, 
because without me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. So this first reading from Paul, well, from uh, the Acts of the Apostles, talks about Paul. He's still Saul here. It's just uh, it's after he's been converted, and it's hard for his apostles to believe that this man who was going around persecuting the Christian church in those early years has now turned around 180 degrees, but, but in fact, that's what's happened. Uh, he's had a uh, an epiphany, a, a, a very, very powerful conversion experience where he heard God talk to him. And he now, uh, as zealous as he was going after Christians, now he is going out and uh, proclaiming uh, that Jesus is the Son of God, the risen one. And as fate and luck would have it, he now, who was once the persecutor, becomes the persecuted. Um, it's interesting to see how the apostles don't really believe uh, that he's had this conversion, and yet they do come to understand. They know that he's seen a vision. When he talks about what's happened, they hear about that conversion experience. They themselves have seen visions of God. So uh, fortunately, it rings true, and we owe so much to Paul, especially in those early centuries. The church grew tremendously because of his his ministry to the, the areas around and outside of uh, Israel. In the gospel, we have another min image, as I mentioned, uh, the vine dresser. Last Sunday, we had the good shepherd, and there's so many different images that Jesus uses to describe himself, you know, beginning with uh, coming to us as a, as a holy infant in Christmas season, uh, as he grows and begins his ministry, he becomes a fisher of men and women, He's the Son of God who has come down from heaven. He's the risen one who's conquered death. Uh, he's even food. He becomes food and wine, food and drink, you know, bread and wine, communion and community. All this to bring about in, in his hearers and his followers a deeper understanding of what God uh, invites us to and what the, the, the community and, and the, the kingdom that God is proclaiming. And that's among us even in this life, uh, if we have eyes to see and ears to hear. So when we're familiar with these gospel stories, when what Jesus said and what he did, and, and when we strive to live gospel lives, brothers and sisters, it's at that point when we begin to see the world that God calls us to. He calls us to both inhabit this world, but also to transform it. And to do this, we must abide in him, keeping the Lord's day holy, following in the traditions. You know, here on the reservation, uh, there's a very strong emphasis on maintaining tradition. The Catholic Church has a tradition that goes back 2,000 years. And, and before that, if we want to look into what we call that Older Testament, the, the Jewish scriptures that Jesus knew so well, but certainly back 2,000 years to this early founding, uh, the Acts of the Apostles and the founding of the church uh, in those uh, years right after Jesus' resurrection. But this idea of keeping the Lord's day holy is, is something that, again, goes back to before Jesus. Jesus kept the Sabbath holy. For him, it was Saturday as a faithful Jew. I remember many years ago when, when I was uh, working, before I was a Franciscan, and I had been in a relationship for a few years, and, and when that relationship ended, I was understandably upset you know, and I, I, in prayer, I just felt kind of a desire to get back to my Catholic practice. 
And the founding, one of the founding practices is to keep the Lord's Day holy. And I thought to myself, well, I know it means going to church, and certainly I, at that point, fortunately had a good community that I did participate in every Sunday. But I also thought, how can I keep, what, what does it mean to keep the Lord's Day holy? And I thought, well, you know, to do something that I love to do. And I kind of racked my brain, what is it that I love? And of course, there's some things that maybe God's not so, uh, so good with, but uh, I could come up with some ideas that uh, creativity and I love nature. And I remember I found almost as though I was led to it in one of the Sunday newspapers, uh, the edition had this uh, list of 50 of the, the regional parks state, regional, and, and uh, even federal parks in the Bay Area where I was living at the time. And so I had been to some of them, but there were a whole lot of others that I had never been to. And I thought, well, you know, I'm working now, and the job I had allowed me to have weekends off. So I began to, to make a, a kind of a little pilgrimage or just a journey to different parks that I'd never been to. And all this with the idea underlying to, to make the day more holy. And I can't tell you, uh, just how much benefit I, I, I felt I gained from that, uh, trying to, to seek a way to, to express love and live in a feeling of enjoyment and pleasure that was certainly uh, very Franciscan, being out in nature. Uh, I felt that God really responded to me and, and, and led me in wonderful ways. Another important way that we live and abide in this tradition of our Catholic faith is to practice the humility of reconciliation, the sacrament of penance or confession. And the church teaches to do this once a year, at minimum, certainly during a Lenten season when we're preparing ourselves for the holiness of uh, the Lord's last days on earth and his crucifixion and resurrection. But any other time, uh, during our lives when things might be troubling us and, and we're kind of getting a little bit off, off course. You know, from time to time, I give counsel to, to married couples. And it's interesting, um, you know, sometimes when there's slip ups, when it comes to, to being faithful, I, I believe that if the, the uh, individuals had been practicing uh, the sacrament of reconciliation, and as I say, just maybe once or a couple of times a year, that would have helped, I think, to keep uh, some of them, certainly, from, from straying too far. But it's when we get away from the practice that we can, can uh, maybe drift too far from our, from our God. And, and this, this particular gospel encourages us, his, uh, the apostles and his hearers, to, to abide in Christ, to remain, you know, to give time to, to reading scripture, uh, becoming familiar. But again, if we're coming every Sunday, or, or keeping the Lord's Day holy by attending services or mass or watching it now on the internet or on television, we're hearing the Word of God on a regular basis. So that's also important in order to develop this uh, gospel life. To pray a little bit each day, uh, even if it's just for a few minutes. But as I say, it's like a seed that you plant and you water it every day, a little bit every day, it's gonna grow. Pretty soon you're going to find that one or two or three minutes of prayer, you're going to feel some days like praying longer. And there'll be those times when you fall, you go into bed and you haven't prayed and you realize, oh, I haven't said my prayers. It's, it's amazing how, uh, as creatures of habit, good habits can take root in our hearts as well. Um, charity, to do some kind of work or, or gift, find a particular uh, project or a particular um, organization that we want to support and be a part of and learn about. Uh, so all these things, I think, uh, you know, going back to that idea of prayer, it was, I've heard it said once that if we can make all of our cares into a single care, then God will come and see to all of our cares. Somehow we can focus our, our desire uh, in life to be, for instance, what God wants. Lord, thy kingdom come, or or teach me, you know, your will and give me the strength to carry it out. These kinds of practices of prayer help us to, to focus on the gospel life. And again, it returns us back to that great commandment, you know, to love God and put God first in our lives. You know, there's so much cynicism in our world and so much lack of trust that we see around us. At the end of uh, Jesus's life in, in Matthew's gospel, the 24th chapter, uh, Jesus is kind of predicting the demise. It's, it's the day or two before his, his own arrest and death. 
and he's predicting the demise and the destruction of the temple. And his apostles ask him, they say, Lord, when will this happen? And he sits down with them and he says, watch out. The first words that he says in Matthew, he says, watch out that no one deceives you. And then he goes on, you know, many other statements we've heard so much, you know, wars and rumors of wars and all kinds of other things that he talks about. But, but that's kind of a theme that he says, watch out. He says, many will come in my name. And he says, be careful that you're not deceived. So brothers and sisters, we have a great faith that extends back 2,000 years. We know the practices, the, the, the seven sacraments are tremendous sources of strength, the scriptures that we hear, uh, the mass that is taken from scripture. You know, we don't have to do as much Bible study if we know our, our sacramental life. We understand that, that hierarchy of importance. That some things that Jesus said and did hold particularly great significance for us. So I'm encouraged, uh, encouraging you uh, to abide in Christ, to be a branch that bears much fruit and not to let your faith or our faith wither away. And let us make our profession of faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the rum to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. So Christ says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask what you will and you shall get it. Let us pray confidently, inspired by his words. For God's chosen and consecrated people, that the church may always offer prayerful and reverent Worship, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the rulers of nations, that they may recognize the service provided by the church and so respect her rights and freedom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For people stumbling on their search for faith, that they may come to God through Jesus Christ, the only way to the Father, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For ourselves as living stones in a spiritual house, that we may work with the energy and courage of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We want to pray too for the attention of this Mass, for the repose of the soul of Martha Garcia. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty Father, the risen Lord Jesus dwells in you. And he is the perfect mediator of our prayers. Hear us in him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us our spiritual food. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice might be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that 
as we have come to know you, your, to know your truth, that we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord, but in this time above all to praise you more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, Giving thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her blessed husband Joseph, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free of sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So I wish you, wherever you may be, peace in your hearts and in your families and the places of work and communities. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Use the Easter blessing. A God who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. And the blessing of Almighty God be upon you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. <laughs>